Terrorism is a well-known term in today's world, a term that is met with fear and hatred in the international community. But the definition of terrorism and the terrorist vary from place to place, and in some instances one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. Of course, the random killing of civilians for whatever reason is generally perceived by the global community as unacceptable. Behind any form of terrorism, there is a story which sets such acts of violence apart from other crimes that involve murder. Behind terrorism is a doctrine, and it is that doctrine that makes it easier for terrorist leaders to recruit members and for they themselves to be manipulated by others. Often, religion is distorted to serve this purpose and provide a common cause for members of a terrorist group. But there is always someone to outwit the mastermind of any organization. Some governments take advantage of the existence of such radical organizations to further their own goals. Abdul Malik Rigi, the ringleader of Jundullah, is a man who has organized and carried out various terrorist attacks. His logic for killing and injuring more than 409 people is one that most would find ludicrous, but there are those who have taken full advantage of his radical beliefs and appetite for recognition. Documents have surfaced alluding to a relationship between Jundullah, NATO and Israel, and Rigi himself has described various meetings with their representatives. State-sponsored terrorism and the way certain groups are put on various terrorist lists and others are not has created a state of confusion and unease in the global community, especially among those who are not protected from either. Rigi's terrorist organization emerged and gained strength in the eastern border of Iran in 2003. Sistan and Baluchistan is where Jundullah first surfaced. Onvan masul guru ta'in shudam va dar tayin muddatam amaliyat ha ziyad surat girifte amaliyat dar zin bude tasuki bude pishin bude va amali tu masjid Ali ibn Abi Talib va majmuan afrad ziyadi fi amaliyat ha kushte va zakhmi shudan. The province's proximity to Pakistan and the poverty inflicting the region have created a suitable environment for extremism to flourish. The tribal systems governing the region play a part in the formation of such groups as well. Rigi himself was an individual hungry for power, who wanted to ascend the ranks and assert his influence and beliefs among his people. Jundullah's initial attacks targeted border guards, but things soon became much more serious. Civilians were held up on highways and shot at point-blank range. Car bombs were detonated, killing passers-by, and hostages were beheaded by Rigi himself. An interesting fact is that from the very first, Jundullah got extensive media attention. State TV channels such as Voice of America and Al Arabiya provided a platform for Rigi to express his views and broadcast footage of beheading and the like. Instigating fear was the goal, and the media coverage Dundala got served that purpose. On the 23rd of February 2010, Abdul Malik Rigi was captured by Iranian security forces. Only 24 hours later, Rigi admitted that his activities were being supported by Western countries, mainly by the United States. Rigi has described his meeting with the U.S. representatives with confidence and great pride, considering it an achievement to be recognized by Washington. این حرف این شخصی از یکی از مسئولین بلند پایه سیاهی بود که ما حمله نظامی به ایران بکنیم این خیلی مشکله ولی ما برنامه داریم که تمام سازمان هایی که مخالف نظام هستن تمام این سازمان ها را کمک بکنیم البته اون سازمان هایی که پتانسیل و قدرت جنگ را دارن نه هر سازمانی و اونا گفته بودن که ما به این نتیجه رسیدیم که گروه شما سازمان شما این قدرت را داره که بالاخره بتونه سیستم را نظام را در منطقه به چالش بکشه و مشکلاتی براش ایجاد بکنه 
Now, about two months later, Riggi has elaborated on his ties with NATO and Israel. He says in order to keep Jundullah alive, he had to establish connections with not only Washington, but Tel Aviv as well. آقای ناصر بولدی با ما یکی میل فرستاد ناصر خودش سخنگوی حزب مردم بلوچستانی که از احزاب سکولار قومیه ایشون ایمیل فرستاده بودن که یک گروهی از افراد ناتو میخوان با شما ملاقات بکنن و همکاری بکنن صحبت بکنن اگر شما میخواید ما میتونیم بین شما و گروه ناتو رابط بشیم بعد از چند روزی با همین مضمون یک پیامی آقای یاسین احوازی فرستاد بود یاسین احوازی یکی از اعضای حزب به خلق عرب الاحوازه به یاسین جواب مثبت دادن و گفتن که کجا قرار ملاقات ترتیب داده بشه اونا نظرشون بر این بود که در کشور مغرب ملاقات بشه من و یکی از دوستانم به نام سلمان سلمان عزیزی با ایشون رفتیم کراچی بعد از اون دیگه برای ما ویزا فرستاد آقای یاسین و ما بلیت گرفتیم از شهر کراچی زمانی کنجا رسیدیم یاسین احوازی اومده بود دنبال ما داخل فرودگاه حرکت کردیم رفتیم داخل هتل به نام هتل الحیات بود اونجا مستقر شدیم چند ساعتی بعد یاسین احواز اومد دنبال ما و گفت که باید بریم برای ملاقات و گفتگوها یکی از خواسته های اساسی که مطرح کردن با دلائل و توضیحات این بود که شما عملیات های خودتون از بلوچستان یا تو منطقه های مرزی که انجام بدید بهتر اینه که این عملیات ها را به مرکز منتقل بدید این هم به نفع ماست و هم به نفع شماست چون که بالاخره تو منطقه که شما دارید عملیات انجام میدید تأثیر گذار بر حکومت نیست نه بر اقتصادش تأثیری داره نه بر کل چرخه نظام تأثیری داره و مؤثر زمانی میشه که شما این عملیات ها را به مرکز برسونید اون زمان هست که دولت متوجه میشه غذایا While describing his activities, Rigi has mentioned two names, Nasser Boleidehi and Yasin Ahwazi. But who are they? Nasser Boleidehi is the founder of the Balochistan People's Party, which was founded in Sweden with the main objective of winning autonomy for the Sistan Balochistan province. But the go-between for Jundullah, Israel and NATO was Yasin Ahwazi. He is a member of the Al Ahwazia group, which is fighting to separate Khuzestan province from Iran. This group has carried out various terrorist attacks in different parts of this province, which have killed many innocent civilians. Jundullah is fighting for the breakaway of Sistan Balochistan province in Iran's southeast, and Al Ahwazia is carrying out terrorist operations with the same goal in Khuzestan, Iran's southwestern province. These two groups have been brought together in various meetings with the NATO and Israeli representatives. But both these groups and the government supporting them have clearly stated their goal, to destabilize Iran. Naturally, by cooperating, they present a much bigger threat to Iran, and that is what they are doing.